Welcome back to Making with Z. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the machine behind me, which is my Grizzly lathe. Uh, in this video, I'm going to do a brief overview of the lathe, and I'll do some subsequent videos of the lathe too, showing some of the detailed functions, and eventually we'll do some turning, uh, threading, boring, things like that. So let's get started. So this is the Model G4003 Grizzly lathe. Uh, it's a 12 by 36 gearhead lathe. And you can see just a general overview of the lathe with the 6 inch chuck, 3 jaw chuck installed, the tool post, uh, you can see the tail stock, and I added an optional DRO which I'll do in a later video. And just a general overview of the lathe sitting on its optional stand that you can also buy from Grizzly. Okay, so I did buy my lathe directly uh, from Grizzly, and I purchased the lathe back in 2004 for a little over $2,000 without the stand. Uh, you can see today it's gone up much higher, um, <clears throat> but still a very good lathe. And what I wanted to show you on their website is they do have the manuals. Uh, you can download a copy of the manual and look at all the specs and instructions. Uh, one thing I did like about Grizzly is they do have really good manuals and really good customer support. Um, the lathe I have is the 12 by 36. They also did have at the time when I bought mine, the 12 by 24. Uh, the only difference being the length of the lathe. And it looks like at this time, it's no longer available. So the 12 by 36 in this type of lathe is the only option. Um, looking at some of these features on the side, and we'll look at this and my what I actually have. But if you look at what's included with it, it shows you a little bit here uh, in the photo they have that you can see. And we'll talk about some of these items uh, that I actually received with the lathe. So if you're looking at lathes, they have quite a few different models, some less money, smaller, uh, some larger ones that are better. So check out the website and um, see if there's uh, something that you'd be interested in. Okay, this is the manual that you can download directly from the Grizzly website. And I just wanted to show you this real quick. It covers the 4002 and the 4003. And like I said, the only difference, the 4002 was a 24-inch version of this 36-inch uh, lathe. So let's just quick overview of the instruction manual. And of course, in this video, I'll show you the actual lathe uh, and examples on that. So just going through the basics, they have their table of contents, not much there. Um, <clears throat> and it gives you some of the topics uh, that are in there. Uh, the first thing notable is that this is a 220 volt single phase lathe. So in a home workshop, you shouldn't have an issue uh, wiring it into your home uh, panel. So they just described the wiring needed. Uh, there's not much there. Um, so one thing of interest here is what's included with these lathes. So here you can see the 6-inch 3-jaw, 8-inch 4-jaw, face plate, steady rest, follow rest, and the other, some of the other things. And, and I'll show you these uh, actual items that I received with the lathe. So the chuck is a D14 size, and I will do a video on this uh, chuck and the mounting of these chucks. The D14 mounting <clears throat> is what's shown. He's uh, removing the chuck there with the key. You could easily remove and put another chuck on there accurately, and it'll hold uh, really well. So really good system. I didn't know about it before I bought uh, this lathe, but uh, it works really well, and I'd recommend it on a lathe if you're purchasing something new. Um, <clears throat> the tailstock did come with a live center, which actually that didn't last. Uh, I, I did a few things, and the bearings in the live center need to be replaced. It also does come with a steady rest, uh, which I haven't used, honestly, for any projects. I haven't needed it. And same as the follow rest, 
did come with it, but so far I haven't run in any projects where I needed to use that. Uh, the four jaw chuck also I haven't used much. Uh, mainly use the three jaw chuck. So the spindle speeds, and I'll show you in the video, uh, can range from 70 to 1400 RPM. And they have two selectors to set the speeds. And you have the ability, you know, to change speeds with the, the levers, and you can also change, uh, there's a feed rod select uh, lever that we'll talk about how all that works. So here are the different feeds uh, in inch and metric feeds that are available on the lathe. And it shows you the feed lever, which I'll show you how that actually works. Uh, it's also able to do threading by selecting the threading rod, and these are the different threads per inch that it's capable of. It's also able to do metric pitches, with, uh, but you do have to change gears to do that. So it also has a thread dial, thread lever for threading. And like I said, it does metric threads uh, by changing the gears. Uh, shown there in the photo. So again, I've only used standard uh, thread pitches, so I really have not cut metric threads with this lathe, so I can't really comment on how well that works, but I'm sure it does work really well. Um, here it shows the basic components, the compound slide, cross slide, and the carriage wheel. And the tool post that it comes with, I'm going to actually do a separate video on the tool post and the tools that can be used with the lathe. Uh, the, the tail stock also is uh, really good, good quality, works well. Um, so in general, it looks like it's a 54-page catalog, and there's a lot to it. It gives you adjustments, how to adjust the gibs, everything uh, that you really need to run the lathe, all the basics. And the last few pages also have a uh, parts list breakdown. Uh, so if you need a part, I haven't had to purchase a part yet, so I don't know how well uh, Grizzly does with uh, supplying parts for the slate. So it, everything here, you can see here, adjusting the headstock and taper. Um, so it, like I said, really good manual. You can download it online at the Grizzly website, but... Let's go ahead and actually look at what I have. Um, uh, so let's go ahead and look. Okay, so the first thing I had to do is bring the lathe home. I used a uh, half-ton Toyota pickup truck to bring it home uh, directly from the truck terminal. And there was some damage uh, to the lathe. The electrical box was damaged, a little bent, uh, but I talked to Grizzly Customer Service and they took care of it. Uh, so let's look at the lathe. The overall length of the lathe is just a little over 59 inches. And the overall depth uh, is, you can see there, about 19 and a half, a little over 19 and a half inches. And then the overall depth to the back of the chip guard uh, on the machine is about two feet. So they advertise it as 36 inch between centers, but you can see here from the back of the chuck uh, right around to the tail stock there is 36 inches. So depending on what you have in there, it's a little less. Uh, the table length, length cross tail, a little over 7 inches. And you can see here that, yeah, about 6 inches is what you got, or, you know, 12 inch diameter as they advertise is what you can swing over the bed of the lathe. So this is advertised as a gap bed lathe and it is. You can remove the bed there. You see where the bolts are. And if you can see it there, there's a split point. And if you remove that portion of the lathe, you can swing 17 inches uh, across the table there. So. Um, so here, if you remove the chuck, uh, on the one end you can insert a number 5 Morris taper sleeve here. Uh, so you can put in a dead center on this side. And on the other side you've got a number 3 Morris taper 
that you can use for your different chucks, centers, whatever kind of tooling you want to use on that end. So here on the lathe I have the three jaw chuck installed and you can use that you know obviously to grip things like this bar stock on the OD but the jaws on these jaws can also grip on the ID of a workpiece. It does come also with uh, another set of jaws that will allow you to grip on the OD of the uh, part. The lathe does come with a quick change tool post that allows you to put tools on and off quickly and I'll do a video detailing this uh, later because there's a lot to it and um, requires more detail. Uh, here I'm starting the lathe with the reset button, push the power start, and over to the right on the carriage here there's a lever, and to push the lever down, turns the chuck on forward, and then moving the lever back to the center position, stops the chuck, and moving it backward there, turns on the chuck in the reverse direction. So here these two levers allow you to adjust the speeds of the chuck. So here we're going to set it to B1, the lowest speed, 70 RPM. So this is the chuck going at 70 RPM. Now this is the chuck at the highest speed, <clears throat> 1,400 RPM. Okay, so this lever allows you to switch between feed and threading. So here I've got it set on feed, and when I turn it on, you can see the feed rod start spinning. And then you have a lever here on the carriage that when you push it up, it will feed the Z axis. And here it's moving towards the chuck. And now when you push that same lever down, feeds the cross slide. So here you can see the cross slide moving. Okay, this lever allows you to change direction. So now I'll reverse the direction and we'll still keep it on feed. And again, you know, when I turn it on, you can see the feed rod spinning. And now when I push up on the lever, carriage is moving away from the chuck. And now engaging the cross slide, it's moving in the opposite direction also. So here now let's switch to threading. And now with the lever engaged on the threading, we'll go ahead and turn on the lathe again. And this time you'll see the lead screw start turning. So now to engage the lead screw, there's a lever here. And here you can see the, uh, the dial for the threading. And this is the lever that engages the screw. So now you can see the carriage is turning again, but this time it will be uh, doing some single point threading with it. And here again, just reversing direction, you can see the screw spinning again. And again, if I engage it now, it will go it travels the other direction. Okay, so they also have an inching button, which is like a jog button. So when you push that button, it just temporarily engages the chuck. These dials are what you use to set your uh, feed rates or your thread pitches. So by following the chart there, you can set all your different thread pitches. 
uh, that you'd need. And then uh, along the side of the lathe here, there's the feed charts in both uh, inch and metric uh, feeds. So here, this is the cross slide hand wheel. You can see it's graduated. Um, if we look at it, we have a hundred thousandths per rotation and each deviation is two thousandths in diameter. And then down here on the carriage, uh, one turn is seventy thousandths, one complete turn, and each uh, line here is ten thousandths in travel. And you can see here the backlash in the screw. I'll show you how much there is. And then also the backlash in the cross slide. And the compound slide, I have it locked in here, but it also travels same rate. And then you do have your angle markings also for the compound slide. Back here on the tail stock, I hit it the wrong way there. It goes the other way. Um, you could loosen the whole thing and move, slide it along the bed of the lathe. And then you could lock it into position. And by turning the hand wheel, now you could extend it to whatever position you need. So here you have graduations on the front to tell you where or how much you're moving in general. And then back on the hand wheel here, same thing. You get about a hundred thousand, you do get a hundred thousands per revolution and each mark is uh, one thousandth of an inch. Okay, now on the side of the lathe here, you can remove the cover. It's a fiberglass cover to get access to I'll show you here. Uh, here you could, these are the change gears. If you wanted to switch over to metric threads, you'd have to change these gears. You could also see the motor back here, and it's got two belts that drive the gearbox. And you can also see the back of the spindle there. Okay, so that was just a brief overview of the lathe. Uh, in some future videos, I'll definitely do some more details on the lathe, such as the chuck, the D14, the tool post, things like that, and definitely some turning, milling, boring operations, and definitely a lot of projects still coming up. So again, thanks for watching.